Right, let us go over some questions to do with electromagnetic induction. It's worth 17 marks, so these questions have been taken from different papers over the last few years. Right, question one. Figure 17 shows the output from a battery. Right, so batteries straight away. I want that to trigger you to see that's DC, which is direct current. So you can see it's um, a steady current. Alternating current is the current that goes up and down like that. Explain why a transformer will not work with the input current as shown. Right, well, transformers don't work with DC. They need AC because an alternating current will produce a constantly alternating magnetic field. That's what transformers need. I'm not sure what this is all about. I've cut and pasted from different exam papers and uh, that's obviously some kind of error there because it makes no sense. Question two. There is a changing magnetic field in the core of a transformer. Describe the cause of the changing magnetic field in the core of the transformer. Well, it's exactly what I've just said. It'll be because there's a change in current in the primary coil. Just in case you can't remember much about transformers, let us remind you how it works. Right, what you've got is a primary coil and a secondary coil. And this big red thing here, that'll be the core. It'll be made of laminated iron. Iron because it's soft as opposed to steel, which would become permanently magnetised. Iron can lose its magnetism, which is what we want. And it's laminated, which means it's in sheets, because that helps the transformer to be more efficient. Right, so basically, if we've got a change in magnetic field in this core, it's because there was a change in current in the primary coil. And that'll get you your two marks. Every time that I'm putting a bullet point here, I'm expecting a mark for it. And this is exactly how I would uh, set it out in your exams as well. It's showing courtesy to the examiner, the person who's going to be marking your paper. Question three. High voltage transmission cables and transformers are used in the national grid. Explain how using high voltage transmission cables and transformers allow the distribution of electrical power around the United Kingdom to be as efficient as possible. Refer to the following equations in your answer. Right. So this is all to do with the national grid. So just in case you can't remember too much about the national grid, let us show you what's happening. I'll draw a little picture. Right, at the power station, they make the voltage at about 25,000 volts, or 25 kilovolts. Now we step it up to about 400,000 volts using a step-up transformer. 
then you need to remember to step down the voltages as well at the end. Now the houses, they need voltage to be like 230 volts. Large factories, 33 kilovolts. And then hospitals and schools, they'll go down to like 11 kilovolts, small factories. And then the schools would also, they'll need to get it down to 230 volts once they're actually in the school. So these values here will probably be helpful for a different question. Right. Why is it that we transmit the energy or the power at such high voltages? Well, it's because if you've got a high current, it makes the wires get hot and you end up losing energy or power because that's energy per second. You end up losing power as it's traveling through the cables and you've got less power and less energy left at the end. Now, what's the best way of seeing that and the easiest way of seeing it in order for us to get these six marks? And we've got to make sure that we use these equations. Right, well, the first thing that we'll do is we'll let them know that there's going to be an energy loss. And the reason for that is because these cables have got resistance. And whenever a cable's got resistance, the cable's going to get hot. Right, this will be a good point to put this in. So that causes power loss. Right, so you can see from the equation, if we make the current smaller, that'll make the power smaller. And it's, it's really important to make the current small because it's a squared relationship. Now, when you lose energy in the wires because of heat, that's what we'll call line loss. So we'll shove that in. Now, a transformer is necessary because a transformer allows us to make the current small, but don't lose any power because we make the voltage as big at the same time. For example, if you make the current 16 times smaller, you can make the voltage 16 times bigger. So the voltage in the primary times by the current in the primary is going to equal the voltage in the secondary times by the current in the secondary. So V times by I, that's power in. And V times by I on the secondary, that's power out. So the power in equals power out. And that's this equation here. Now let's use the equation. All right, so that means that you've got a low current, so the power loss is going to be smaller. Now remember, if you step up the voltage at the beginning using a step up transformer, we're going to need to step down the voltage at the end using a step down transformer. You can't be putting 400,000 volts into someone's house. Um, the voltage means that you'll have sparks jumping all over the place. Right, now it's only worth six marks and we've definitely got six marks there. Now I've tried to write it in as much detail as I can. You only need to say six of them. So to be honest, you probably don't need these last two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll easily get your six marks just by saying that. But I thought while I've got the picture up there, I'll explain it to you. Question four. The photograph shows a step-down transformer. Ah, oh, just like I've just been explaining. Explain why step-down transformers are used in the transmission of electricity in the national grid. Right, well, it's that last part that I've put up the top there. 
Step down transformers allow us to decrease the voltage near to people's homes so it's safer. There'll be less chance of electrocution. Question 5. Complete the following sentences using one of the phrases from the box below. Right, electrical power is generated at, well that'll be something to do with the power station, right, so that's that one. Part 2, electricity is transmitted over long distances by transmission lines that are part of, well that'll be the national grid. Part 3, electricity is transmitted at high voltages, so that... Efficiency is reduced. Nope, that'll be so efficiency is increased. So they've tried to catch it out there. Be careful. Uh, there, heat loss is reduced. Now, hopefully I don't need to explain that to you because I've already explained it in question three. Question six. In a small transformer, the primary voltage is 230 volts. Right, I can see where we're going here. So primary voltage, so that's the voltage in the primary. The primary current is that. Right, okay, so current is I, and if it's in the primary, that's IP. So just have a look at the equation as well and make sure you're using the correct symbols. And the secondary voltage is 5 volts. So that's the voltage, but it's in the secondary. So that's that. So remember... Your transformer is a soft iron core like that and it's got coils on the primary and then coils on the secondary. Do you know the difference between step up and step down? Let's show you that picture off before. The step up transformer has got less coils on the primary and more coils on the secondary. So if it was a wall, you'd have to step up because that is higher than that. That's how I always draw it for my students. And then if we use the same way, the step down transformer, imagine that those coils there on the primary, imagine it's like a brick wall, that's like 10 foot wall or something. And then we're gonna step down onto a five foot wall. So that's like 10 coils. And then that would be five coils. You'd step down in height. So that's a step down transformer. That's what you need to remember. So what's that? Well, that's a step up transformer because you've got less coils on the primary and more coils on the secondary. And then this one. And this one is a step down transformer. So loads of coils on the primary and not many on the secondary. The first coil is always called the primary coil and the second coil is always called the secondary coil. Doesn't matter what kind of a transformer it is. Anyway, let's get back to this question. We've just got to calculate the secondary current, IS. Let's pop the numbers in. So VP was 230. IP was 0.02. And VS was 5. And when we do that, That'll come out as 0.92 and it's current, so that's amps. And that's how to do that. So there were 17 marks up for grabs there. I'm not sure how long it's took us to go over that because I've been explaining things. The more that you practice, the better you'll get. And you'll be able to answer these questions easy at the rate of one mark per minute, which is the speed you need to get to for your exam technique. Work hard, be nice, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.